Hi, everybody, and happy Halloween, almost. So we're glad you guys are here, and we hope that you are getting ready and getting into the Halloween spirit. Uh, we've been in the Halloween spirit here all, all month. month. <laughs> yes, because Brittany and I are October girls, so Halloween is the best. It's really nice way to end our special month, right? So we love it. Um, so I know that some of you have been doing um, Halloween things on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, I've been trying to follow along, and there's been things going on on YouTube, too, where people have been doing um, costume challenges. So well, I've really enjoyed what I've seen. Um, I don't know if any of you out there right now because I can't see the screen, if any of you are in your Halloween costume. The only Halloween costume we have is our, our Angela scarf. Our coordinating yes. scarves. Our Actually, coordinating scarves. I have yes. Rex Skellington on. Well, yeah, you do have Rex Skellington. So Christina is here with us today, too. Brooke wanted to make sure that I said hi, and she's sorry she's not here, but she is hiking this weekend. Um, she's out in the mountains of Virginia getting some, <laughs> getting some downtime. Okay. So like we have a really small space mm -hmm. here and we have lots and lots of like equipment that I don't know what half of it does, but apparently Christina does. And <clears throat> we also have a lot of lights and so it can be really dangerous to move around. Mm, totally fine. <laughs> totally fine. Totally fine. So I don't know if any of you brought your sewing with you or if you're working on projects. Um, I didn't bring anything now. I know Brittany is working on projects because she's mm -hmm. always working on projects. So what do you got going on right now? I'm making my first reading out right now. I'm mm -hmm. making a, about 1789, $1790 reading out out of some dark purple wool, Ooh. which is not normally a Brittany color. Brittany, no, normally, but Brittany and Christina usually go for aqua. Yeah, aquas um, and blues. Yeah. Aquas and blues. Should be pretty nice. And Brooke is helping. Uh, she helped yeah. do, and Christina was there too. Um, we did some uh, fitting. She yes, helped me. Some... Christina's messing with the foam. She's Look, messing um, with the light. Listen, she's messing. Linda, honey. <laughs> <laughs> she's messing with the noise. Okay, okay. But no, but it'll be so perfect. purple. Is yes. it, it's dark purple. It's dark purple. It's like and, a dark and plum. like a worsted. It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. It's worsted. Um, and I think I'm gonna try my first death head buttons, which means I'm gonna need to buy our book. And no, that's not a plug. <laughs> but I really, I think before I leave today, I need to, uh, I need to buy our button molds and our button book because I don't have those yet. Uh, so I can learn how to make death head buttons, which I've always wanted to do. Uh, so that will be exciting. So yeah. hopefully, just gonna do a little. CW I love doing about. death head buttons. So. Yeah, yeah you, it, either you love them or you don't. It's fiddly work. Uh, I do really well with the giant disc that we teach it on. <laughs> when you this take size a button, yeah, when you take flavor, a, flavor. right when you take a hands-on workshop with us, we have a giant disc and yarn and and a big like needly thing. And so yes, we I, I can do that one. Yeah, I do that one really well. <laughs> Jim can do death heads buttons. I like them. Those are one of his little secret things, his little secret superpowers. He's really actually a very good um, um, tailor. Well, I don't know that I'd call him a tailor, but he sews really, really well. He's um, a good semster. He's a good semster. <laughs> yes, a semster. But, a semster. Uh, a semster. But he, um, he, uh, he sews really well. It's one of his dark powers that he doesn't tell anybody Neil because he's says, afraid somebody um, will tell him to sew. Neil says death head buttons are easy. Blah, blah, blah. I don't have Neil's training. Maybe Neil should do your buttons. I button. can make yeah. death head buttons, Neil. Neil, you going to make my buttons then if it's so easy? Yes, please. Oh, and actually, yeah. you, um, somebody who's watching is making buttons right now. So All right. that's cool. Yeah. yeah. It's good fiddly work. It's excellent fiddly work. You know, it's the kind of thing you can do in front of the TV set, you know, when you just need, like, downtime. It is definitely a little project. That, and you can put it into a Ziploc bag and take it anywhere. So it's really great. Guys, we just so, look really cute with our scarves. Look at this. We're so cute with our scarves. <laughs> yeah. Adorable. We're so adorable. Sorry. No, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, guys, what are you guys working on? Christina's looking at your, your comments so we can kind of talk to you and find out what everybody else is doing. 
and also find out if you have questions for us because how about those workshops? We're sorry. <laughs> we know they sold out really quickly. Um, so I know I had a few emails of discontent and I apologize for that, but eh, we can only do so much. It's kind of the same thing as our hands-on workshops. Um, we have limited capacity, so it's sort of this first come first serve and either you get it or you don't, but we're really good about, you know, cycling things around again. So this workshop will definitely come back um, and you will have another opportunity because we're good that way. Um, and we also have some other things planned. And Christina's playing okay. with the it's phone okay. again. No, we're just, we're a little wonky. It's going to be fine, Linda. Okay, Linda, it's just okay. stop. Linda, honey, you know, go. quit messing with the I'm things, sorry. Linda. <laughs> okay, um, so we have, oh, uh, some people are working on shifts. Oh, very good. Um, Connie is hemming her shift. And so good job. And uh, a housewife and a pair of front lacing stays uh, from L. And let's see. Yeah, Ooh, there's a, a mock up. Oh, hold on. Their comments are going so fast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, wow. well, while she's trying to catch up with the comments, a lot of you guys are out there working on stays. And I'm really impressed, which is I'll let her say some more things and then I'll tell you something else we're going to be doing. Oh, okay. Yeah. A little mini. Um, we got a mock up of some comfy pants from Kelly. Uh, so that's, I love comfy. Good pants. time for cups. Yes. Yeah, yes. I'm into camp. It's the best time. Um, the, um, I got a copy of the, um, gosh, what does she call it? It's, uh, smooth sailing? Yeah, smooth yes. sailing. I wanted to say sail away. Of um, course <laughs> Sail away. Come the smooth selling trousers that I'm super excited about building and as a matter of fact that black wool that we got in oh yes is what i'm going to make it out of. Mm -hmm. i actually took some of our worsted um which if you see it online it's uh an uber good price it's 12 dollars a yard because it had a weaving issue and when i say weaving oh, the tension was off so the weft yarn is slightly cantered so that's not a problem when you go to cut, because you cut with your weft and your warp yarn, it's only a problem if you try to fold it because you can't fold salvage to salvage. You'll get like a ripple effect. But anyway, I washed and dried it to see if that would help because sometimes that helps too and you can then tether it and, and get it a little straighter, right? So I went on and I did a warm wash and I did a cool dry and oh my God, it feels so good. I'm making my trousers out of that fabric, so. They're making so many things I can't even keep up in All the, the things, like you're making all the things. and waistcoats and oh my just God. Like you guys, all the stuff. You guys are so amazing. I mean, we know because we the raw stuff goes out the door and we're hoping that people like get the thing done and tag us because what we love more than anything is seeing your project. Yes, because that comes up yeah. all the time here. You know, I, I pull a lot of the orders and you always kind of think, I wonder what this person is doing with this right. fabric. Or, right. oh, they bought they bought nine yards. Maybe they're making a gown. And so it gets really exciting when we can see oh, yeah. what they um, make out of it. Speaking of, like, projects, this is kind of a cool question. Clem uh, <laughs> says, uh, I foolishly didn't make a mock-up and now have cut out of a shift that's too small around for me. What should I do? You can piece. Um, piecing piecing yeah, yeah. just mm -hmm. add um kind of like you would with those kind of gores or gussets in the side mm -hmm. just go ahead and add that straight all, all the way up the way to up. the armhole yep. mm -hmm. you can totally do that and mm -hmm. you're you'll be good to go and that mm -hmm. will make it wide enough for you mm -hmm. yep yeah it happens yep ain't, ain't a big deal it, nope it's not a big deal <laughs> you see shifts you know with with different construction and yeah and issues and depending on what they had or if it was, you know, altered. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's not a problem. Geeky Ace is wondering if we have uh, any videos of the muslins we have in stock in action. In action. Um, to see them. Um, we could probably post we could something do an, later this yeah, week. Yeah, we can do yeah. we can do an Insta of that. Like we can do, week, do guess, a yeah. little with all the muslins because we've got, like, what, like four now or mm -hmm, five yeah, maybe? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we've got the Nancy. I actually, we have, and I don't know, <laughs> so many things, so little time. Um, I have a collection of Edwardian stuff under, under things. Also, we have a little grouping of under things from one of our customers who so graciously sent them off to me. So as my thank you, I've oxied them so they're whiter than they were. Not white, white, but they're, they're much cleaner than they were. And um, at some point, we want to do a live or else a video, you know, showing off all those things. And that leads me to our muslins. It's Angela's normal roundabout <laughs> way of getting the thing. Um, I have an original Nan Souk uh, sample book. So I'm going to bring that out at the same time. And you can see all the different qualities of Nan Souk that were available during the Edwardian period. So... Um, Celtic Goddess was wondering what wool we would recommend for the smooth sailing trousers. Mm. Well, uh, any of the lightweight worsteds would do really well. Our time traveling worsteds mm -hmm. would look oh, so yes. hot. Those would be oh, that blue and black the blue, one, the, the chat. The, yeah. Yes, oh, the one. Oh, yes. Yeah. Should yeah. we bring it out? Should we bring out? Do you guys want to? We'll show wools? one of them. We'll just do one. Yeah, yeah just one for the we've moment. Got, we've got a few fabrics a few. at the end because you know we got to do the show and tell. But this is one that we just put up. Okay, so you can. I'll bring it close. <laughs> bring it away. But this. This particular one, some of them are lighter than others. This particular one is light, but it has some nice body to it. It's really soft. So, yeah. and it's soft. And winter trousers would be amazing mm -hmm. out of this. I think you would love it. And it's got the blue in it. Yeah, like, yeah and Christina was pointing out it actually has some... Some like a tiny purple. bit of it has yeah, like a really red. soft kind of grayish purple mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. yeah. too in, so the, in the cross pretty. stripe it's yeah. really nice i really yeah. like this one it's i want to i want my winter romper out of this there you go do it do the thing do the thing so anyway yes our time traveling and um you know brooke is is the the mastermind of the tuesday morning <laughs> <laughs> rush to see what's new thing um but she has, we, she and I have planned out uh, what we're going to be putting up for the next two weeks, I think. Yeah. 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 At least yeah. the next two weeks. So there's more coming. And I got to photograph those today. <laughs> oh, minor detail. Yeah, I just thought of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and actually, I, I actually bought some more time traveling just because I'm, I'm on a, a tear. I, yeah. Um, so Jenny, who I assume from her question is probably a European customer, Jenny, correct me if I'm wrong, but wants to know if we'll be offering any more PDF patterns. Um, yes, we will. Yes. Um, we, I, I actually am working on uh, a MIP pattern for us that will be able to PDF. Um, I have to do a little bit of work on it before I can turn it over to Lauren, who's been helping me. Uh, Thanks, from Lauren. Yes, yeah, wearing history. She's amazing. Um, but anyway, I realized when I just sent the, the artwork over um, in the, the original uh, pattern that I bought years ago that we own um, was hand-drawn, and it's very wobbly. So it needs to be redrawn. So I'm going to hand-draw it again properly and then give it to her. <laughs> So, yeah, not that you need to know all that. Did but, you want to cycle back to stays? You said you wanted to talk about something. Oh, just the fact that so many people are working on stays. And just for, I cannot remember the name. It's Alice's, Alice Creations, maybe. This is a European company. I believe she's in England. Um, somebody in England who does a half-scale PDF pattern. Just like we've got bootstrap, um, this is the same concept, but it's a half scale pattern mm -hmm. for small mannequins. And I had seen it one evening and told um, the ladies about it. And they were like, oh, we so need that for our workshops, right? For our online workshops. So we're going to do it. But then we had a conversation <laughs> and she goes, I want to modify because, and I won't, the beeps are in the wrong place and so i'm like <laughs> did you just bleep yourself talking about i did okay okay anyway well i guess yes. if i can bleep 
the bosom is in the wrong place. <laughs> so she says, you know, we need to lift the bosom. And I said, but you know what? I want to be able to put different foundations on this. So we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to cut off her bosom and then we're going to give her a soft bosom so that when we stay her mm -hmm. or corset her, she will have the proper shape. So I'm yeah, because we might want to do like, yeah. you know, or like teen, early 18 teens stays or yeah, corsets exactly. we'll, or we'll 18 do 30s. It. Right. Like, yeah. So we're, we're giving ourselves some uh, leeway here. So that will that will show up in the future. Um, yeah, this is probably going to be a Saturday sewing project. I know it. But anyway, um, that will show up in the future uh, with our workshops. That's what we're hoping. So our online workshops. And there are future workshops planned out. We have yes. two planned out. Um, they won't come to you till the new year. Um, we do have a lot scheduled between now and Christmas. We, we, Christmas will be, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so much. So much, all the things. We have big plans. Big plans. Um, we have two so-longs planned. Mm -hmm. So we have a, uh, I'm not going to say what they are. Say, no, no. Don't no, spoil it, Linda. It's a secret. It's a secret. <laughs> but we have two so-longs planned. And we collectively have a day of kit making to do um, in order to help with these little free sew-alongs. But those will be fun little um, historically accurate projects that you can do that are Christmas spirited and will be something well, they, that I mean, you can. I mean, they can be used for all year kind of anything. Yeah. But, but they yeah. can also fall into the but Christmas But they're good category. for, you know, gifting. Yeah, they're good holiday for gifting. gifting. Whatever holiday you all choose to celebrate. Right, that yeah. too, that too. So although we celebrate Christmas here, there, there there's loads of holidays. So um, anyway, so that's happening. We're going to do a little bit more with lives. <laughs> Lacey um, says she see you trying so hard not to spoil the secret. <laughs> yeah, I know, because I say all the things. I can't help it. It's okay. It's exciting. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, we're going to do some lives, and you're going to see – are we going to see you again? Maybe. Maybe. We keep trying to con Brittany into doing lives <laughs> yep. with us, and she's always, like, unavailable. Yeah. It's because Brittany makes really stupid faces, so she's over here just blue steel <laughs> all the time. Brittany, Brittany makes a lot of really faces. silly faces. So. my favorite part of the day. I don't want to ruin the lives <laughs> with you my face. You don't ruin the so. lives. Yeah. No. So do you guys, do you have questions for us? Because you got an opportunity here. Oh, so. um, actually, this is a really good one. And um, so Clem says, what are some patterns that you would recommend for plus size beginners like me? I've never used a pattern before, but it seems like an important skill. Mm. Yeah. One of the biggest issues, I, I'm not a big pattern user myself, but I'm definitely plus size. Um, and what the one of the issues that I've discovered um is that I really have to do, you know, multiple mock-ups. Mm -hmm. I just, I can't get by without doing it. But once I get a good pattern cut to me, then I use that pattern. Like we, yeah. we teach a basic shapes workshop, hands-on, um, where you're gonna get some sense of that if you're taking our uh, Mantua Makers, the little, our little gown workshop that's coming up. Um, you're going to get some sense of that because Brooke cuts on Brittany um, and gives you the idea of what these shapes are supposed to look like. But I have my shapes from before COVID, but I have my cool. shapes um, that I've cut. I've designed several different gowns off of um, going from, you know, early 18th century to very late 18th century Um because it's a good body block that I can work with and then I make some modifications. But pattern wise, somebody that I think does a fantastic job of fitting herself is Rebecca Mayton. Um, who else is it that, that, there's some YouTubers that do some really good stuff that may or may not use patterns. Um, what I can tell you based on patterns is I can tell you the pattern designer and how they basically grade their pattern. Um, so depending on who you want to buy from, if you give me your basic body shape, I can tell you if their pattern is going to be a bear for you or not as far mm -hmm. as modifications go with the patterns that we carry. Um, 
otherwise laughing moon seems to have a lot of versatility mm-hmm. i know yeah. i have not used them yet but um um celtic goddess also recommended truly victorian who i have yeah which i before. just got ready to say truly Victorian. and um i know i think like Brittany, you mm-hmm. have like a few more issues with it Mm-hmm. than I do. I mm-hmm. have a great time with Heather's patterns from Truly Victorian. It's because you're stacked. Um, it's because I'm stacked. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Brittany doesn't feel so that I feel well like Heather does, she does a really great job. Like that whole mm-hmm. pattern line does a really great mm-hmm. job for um, kind of larger women. And uh, she also has variables. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, and so I do really, do really enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- always think about body type when you're mm-hmm. looking at the pattern line that you're choosing, I think is probably the takeaway right, here. Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, some people are suggesting a couple of companies in Europe. I haven't used them. Which um, ones black are they? Black Snail. Yeah, Black Snail. So... Now, Black Snail has a red and goat pattern. And I think some people have had good. Have you seen that pattern? I own it. I haven't you... used it yet because okay. Brooke was insistent that she wanted to uh, pr- practice her shapes on me. Yeah. So, but I do um, have it. Brittany, you use a lot of patterns. I use a lot of patterns. And mm-hmm. so she's much more versed in patterns mm-hmm. and actually a good person to talk to if you call here and you're not sure about something. <laughs> Brittany's probably your woman. Um, but, uh, yeah, Black Snail, uh, I've heard of. Who else have they said? Um, sorry, it's just the chat goes really fast. Uh, oh, that's another Black Snail. Uh, well, uh, Celtic Goddess is using the Wearing Histories plus size pattern. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, and and that's what I have is the trousers that I'm going to be building. So I'll let you know how they go. Um, so I know Lauren worked super hard on them to really get the plus sizing correct. Um, because a yeah. lot of times what I've discovered with scaling when they get into the larger sizes, I don't know what it is, but proportions don't change the way they change the proportions. So I'm one of those people that I'm petite, but plus size. So I don't need, because I've got a 40 something bust, I don't need an arm side this big. Mm -hmm. And that's how they end up doing their um, grading. So, yeah. Sorry, it's a question about the workshop, but Brooke's not here. Oh, (laughs) well, what is it? It's about about technical stuff like with the getting into the class and stuff like that oh yeah yeah that's a brooke question sorry you can uh-huh. email brooke at brooke at burnley and yeah. if you have a question if you're already signed up and you need to ask something prior to the class starting um monday um then you can just shoot her an email and of course you know for those of you that are in the class it is available that entire week um and then some but you don't have to rush to take it on Monday if you don't yeah, have time. Yeah, you'll you'll have the whole week and right. So and then some. So yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Clem, we will be bringing in more online classes at different levels, so that's mm-hmm. going to be happening for sure. successful this quickly and hopefully you'll say it's successful again if you're signed up after you've taken it but we're hoping it will be we think it will be it's based on our same model it is all based on uh the burnley and trowbridge hands-on workshops as best as we can do in a video format so um the same level (laughs) just ignore me okay (laughs) okay the same level of information um you know, you're going to get, you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck. We think so. Oh, I mean, we're going to be getting feedback from you guys through the process right, too, to help too. us make it a better yes. experience for you. So yes. You, yes, this is our test drive. So we'll see yeah. how that goes. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think uh, Patricia was asking if the class will get the sleeves and I said, it'll cover the entire, uh, the entire process of yes. constructing the gown. It won't be fitting though. So I do, uh, I do want to like make sure that we're clear on that. It's the construction of the gown. Mm-hmm. So this is like covering all of the techniques for you guys to use in future projects, whether right. you want to use it on doll gowns or whether you want to use it on full, full size scale gowns. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's not going to cover fit. And that's because that's really, really hard to do virtually yeah (laughs) without your body yeah without your body it really is but 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 brooke does 
talk about shapes, which is the, the, the essence of, of how we build these gowns and how those shapes are gotten. Um, so you will start to understand that process that would, if you were to, if you take this class and you were to walk into our, um, one of our gown workshops, our, our uh, hands-on gown workshops, you would be like light years ahead yep. already. Yeah. So. And if you decide at some point to take uh, the shapes class, mm -hmm. uh, then you would be able to use this online class to then take your shapes home and, and then make build them something. Yeah. And yeah. Then build gowns. So yeah, the shapes, the shapes class, you know, when COVID's over with, and it will be someday, Please. some way, um, we will be back to our, 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 we won't give up our virtual. This is a new avenue for us. So this will continue, but we will be back to our hands-on workshops because we know how much people love them. Um, and then we will be back to doing things like the shapes workshops and there's so many workshops we've given over the last, what, 19, 20 years. Connie wants to know how long we've been in business. <laughs> um, Jim actually started the business back in the 80s, but we turned it into Burnley and Trowbridge in 94. So it's been Burnley and Trowbridge since 94. And we've been doing workshops since 2002? 2002. Yeah. Actually, 2001 was my test case. I did, I did a volunteer thing. <laughs> And I did all these workshops. I organized them. And um, I was like, you know, I have all this talent right here in our little town. And nobody knows it. And that's what, that's how it began, was to um, showcase those talents. I really hope I don't say your name wrong. I'm really sorry if I do. Shatara? Could be Shatara. I don't okay. know where she's from. Uh, it says, I love the virtual workshops. Oh, there's a lot you. of that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You guys, um, the, the sew alongs have been really a lot of fun. Um, it, it was a lot of work, but we, we are so excited because what those sew alongs did is it brought all these new people mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. that I will tell you, I'll, I'll share a secret publicly for all the world to see. <laughs> um, the one thing that occasionally would come up about our hands-on workshops. It was Shatera, by the way. Shatera. <laughs> yeah, you. Um, was that people would Shatera, feel sorry. intimidated. Now, Brittany's even taken our workshops. Oh. And she was kind of like, I'm not sure. You know, that kind of thing. Um, this is way before her working with mm -hmm. us. Um, and because they became so popular that people were afraid like new people that were just getting into historical costuming or just learning how to sew were afraid to take our workshop and it used to I mean it literally would bring me to tears because I couldn't understand why and this virtual sew along series that we've done has broken yeah. that barrier and I'm like yay <laughs> finally you know because all are welcome it's a journey, right? Think all of us our sewing has changed so much over the years, wouldn't you say? You know, from the from the get go and all the influences that we've all had, mm -hmm. um, it continues to change. And the world of historical sewing um, is very fluid, you know. And it and it yes, it is somewhat subject to uh, what what would you call it like fads. Yes, yeah. trends. There are definitely trends. Trends, trends mm -hmm. is a good way. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, trends. Yeah. So it, it is subject to trends. And to be with that and to stay on that, I, it, it's the same angst that I get when I look at everybody doing all the Edwardian clothing. And I love it. And I look at it and I go, oh, so afraid, so afraid, mm -hmm. don't understand. Mm -hmm. Sewing machine, lots of sewing machine, <laughs> don't understand. <laughs> Neil, Neil says he still cries every time he sews. <laughs> So I told him that when COVID's over, uh -huh. we'll hold him. Okay, we'll hold him. We'll make okay, it. Neil. We'll make him well. <laughs> we'll make it good. Um, a lot of people are just talking about how uh, the sew alongs have been so helpful for them, just in COVID, and kind of keeping, good. You know, keeping their sanity or keeping yeah. their mojo going. So. We're glad. Yeah, we're glad. And they're there for you for always. If you need to visit with us, we're on YouTube. 
Um, I don't have, well, I don't have any other questions yet. Okay. Um, it is, it is 402 though. So we so might we can show want to think fabrics. about, would you guys want to see some fabrics? Maybe? <laughs> Maybe, kind of. Oh, I yes. threw them it, everywhere. It's, it's a resounding. Yeah, I, I threw yes. them all underneath because oh, they were doing? in my way. I made a mess, Linda. You did, Linda. They're everywhere. So some of these are all it. This is going to be your question. Okay. I can't remember what's up and what's not. <laughs> I don't know if all of these are up. Every, everything everything that we're pulling out is yes. currently for sale. Except, except the cotton. Except for the cotton. Yes. The, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. But okay. everything else is up hiding. and ready yeah. to purchase okay. if you want to. That I'd already showed, I'd already you already showed, showed the blue. Yeah, yeah. Already, you already saw that cool blue check that we all wanted. We're going to be like we're going to be like the three, the four musketeers. Because she Tara says, take my money. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the fabrics. Brooke will want to get in on it. So we'll be the four musketeers. We'll all have very, just like we all have our our Angela on <laughs> we'll all have our um okay but did you guys see the picture on insta of Angela getting packed in the padded mailer yes it started Come with on. a joke it started with a joke because Brittany said I'm packing a lot of Angela's right yeah which is the name of our beautiful new scarf yes I know mm -hmm. I'm like I'm so shy mm -hmm. I just named something after myself <laughs> She's but, a wilting flower. I'm a wilting flower. No, you're not. But, <laughs> but anyway, so she said, I'm packing a lot of Angela's. And mm -hmm. I started laughing. I said, yeah, we could put Angela in a in a package and send her. And I said, wait, we could put a miniature Angela. And I looked at Christina. I said, make me a miniature Angela. Let's do this. And so with a green screen and her talent, you got little Angela. Should we tell them about our green screen? Because <laughs> oh, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. It is yeah. pretty great, and it's not up online. It's not yet. up online no, yet. No. But no. Mm -hmm. We have a really great green broadcloth that's coming. Yeah, it's grass green. It's yeah. actually an 18th century color. It's mm -hmm. amazing. It mm -hmm. happens to be the exact same color of green screen. Of a green screen. <laughs> it worked <laughs> so, great. Worked a treat. So Berlin Tropebridge bought Christina some of this wool which will now go into the photography stuff <laughs> so yeah it did it did work a treat it was um, lots of fun just just a quick note uh Sarah was asking if there's going to be a cat version of the scarf there are cats on the scarf it's oh yeah dogs and it's cats. dogs and yes. cats all different kinds of dogs all different kinds of cats yep. and actually what I may do later yeah, on down the line is, yeah, you can yeah, see. Teddies, yeah. doggies. Yes. Is that a, I think that's a dog. That's a doggy. Okay. That's a kitty. Mm -hmm. That's a kitty. That's a kitty. Yes, there's <laughs> lots of dogs and, and cats. Yep. So, um, no mouses, no squirrels, no, no. guinea pigs. But you know but what we have here? Fabric. fabric. Okay, let's talk fabric. Okay. All right, let's do linen first. So these are things that we have up online that maybe we thought you needed to see a better look at mm -hmm. because these are all like fall, wintry colors. And we we do carry linen all year long. So I know that some of, you know, like your Joann's, you can't walk into Joann's in the winter and buy a piece of linen. But you can get linen from us all year long. I buy all year long. And that's for you Australian folks out there. <laughs> right. Because we love you. Because we love you. That's right. But also Virginians too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because <laughs> like yesterday was 80 degrees. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so the first up is this Czech linen. Um, it's It really is pretty. It's got like a goatish color to it. Um, it's, it's not, it, it's really kind of more of a medium weight i don't know if brooke has it in as a medium weight but it's something that would work well um from an historic standpoint it would make um, a man's shirt it would make an apron um it would make lining material for various things uh, it could possibly make a uh, checked bed gown Again, I've talked about this before with our sew-alongs. You know, if you're in a group that is looking for documentation, then you want to be able to document what you're wearing. Um, so that's something to consider. But the coloring in this, you know, the, the choice of like three different colors is not in the 18th century. And certainly this weave pattern you would find. And these colors are very neutral, something that would have been easily gotten. Um, so this... 
is great. And if you're doing time traveling, uh, the world is your oyster. This would be a great um, Civil War era. Mm -hmm. Civil War era gown, day dress. Uh, it would be a great um, work dress for like, you know, like early uh, 1900s, for example. I do. Um, um, I do like those bicycle. Oh, right. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, the, like the bicycle bloomers. Yeah. yeah, the bicycle bloomers. Yeah, it would make great bicycle bloomers. Nami says it would make a great teen suit for a woman as well. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah really exactly. Nice good and of course, idea, Nami. Good idea, Nami. And then going in, uh, so we'll stay in kind of that color range. Um, you're going to, if you, you, if you're taking our class, you're going to see this fabric being made into a gown. Um, this is a ticking. Um, it is, again, this goldish color. I mean, these two actually are kind of like simpatico so this is a ticking stripe um it has a it, it doesn't it has a, a herringbone weave to it um which you do see in original tickings it is lightweight again it's something that you know you can make um everyday wear out of uh, Brooke for the wanted 18th me century. to caveat for you guys because yes. in the class um, she does recommend that you use a plain weave right. for your fabric. And we chose this one because it had the stripe that showed well on camera. Yeah. Um, but she wanted me to just mention, you know, maybe not this one for the This has a certain amount of, of the, the ticking. Right. The yeah. ticking, the, having the, the ticking, the, um, uh, herringbone yeah. stripe gives it a certain amount of wiggle. So, uh, from a standpoint, if you're using this, and sewing you could have some wiggle if it's your um, first time like, right maybe stick with a plain woven if you are more experienced though then you should be able to handle something yes like that. you'd be able yeah. to handle it so this again so many things you can make out of this all time periods um this I, i've really been enjoying our whole time traveling aspect um because for for me a lot of it is new. I'm so entrenched in the 17th, 18th, early 19th century and coming forward and being exposed to so many people who have so much knowledge in other time frames has been very exciting. And so I'm starting to recognize our textiles and the ones that travel um, and finding these textiles in other time periods. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been a neat journey. I've enjoyed it. Um, Again, a little bit more linen here before we get into our worsteds. This little check here is so pretty. This is a check that I had um, a long time ago, um, and I found it again. And it has a very uh, sort of a, I guess you would call it a, a, a teeny bit of a pumpkin-y color or, or a rich gold color, I guess. You mean like and a then, marigold kind of? A what? Like a marigold? Marigold, kind of? yeah. Yeah, golden rod. maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, goldenrod. Yeah. That sounds good. It's goldenrod. Um, and a light, creamy yellow color, butter color. Um, it's a small, even check. You see small, v even checks again in the 18th century. Um, in a lot of the books that I've looked at and the foundlings and things like that, there is a push towards blue and white. Um, many years ago, Mark Hutter made the, uh, who is the master tailor at Colonial Williamsburg, um, said he wondered if the possibility of so much indigo um, was because, and the fact that it was being made into things like shirts and aprons, that sort of thing, was because that indigo can be hot washed and it won't lose its color, whereas these kind of colors could be fugitive. Um, so... I did find a lot of blue and white in my travels, but I did also find other colors. Um, and one comes to mind. I have this lovely um, textile from the Foundlings. It is a linen, and it consists of a yellow, a pink, a blue, and what appears to be kind of a sagey green um, color woven into a check or what you modern in a modern term, oh my God, plaid. <laughs> okay, so they call it plaid. Um, but it is a, a complex check. <laughs> and, and it is a linen, so it's not the brown. Um, 
the last one is this other little ticking stripe, which is just gorgeous. I, I really love this linen. It has a beautiful texture to it. Again, it's another herringbone, a tiny, it's got a tiny herringbone weave in it, and then a plain weave. Linda, you're shifting so, the table. Oh, sorry. I pushed it with my bosom. Um, <laughs> beep! <laughs> beep! Um, so the gold is herringbone, and the brown is a plain weave. And this is something that I think can make up easily into later period garments. You know, I mean, I see this being a beautiful tailored Edwardian walking suit. Um, yeah, it, this could be lots of things. And again, it could be 18th century. So a petticoat, uh, a bed gown, a gown. There's a request for this one. <laughs> but why? Because they like it. Because they like yeah. it. Yeah. This is a really pretty um, lightweight worsted that we got in. It has a, a beautiful green cast to it. It's actually made up of more than one yarn. It's an olive green yarn and then a very, very dark brown cross yarn. So um, it has, it doesn't appear changeable, but it gives it kind of a texture. Um, it has a really good hand to it. You can see it's got a nice, it's got a nice drape to it. Um, it's not completely opaque but it definitely has some body to it. It's not super lightweight. Um, it would make up well into any type of draped uh, garment. It would also do well for lightweight suiting. Um, you could certainly add to it to give it a uh, body, you know, and do something like, let's say, again, an Edwardian skirt or something mm -hmm. like that. We're all uh, just in Edwardian mode we're right in now. It, I know, I keep <laughs> saying that, right? It's because it's like everywhere right now. It really is. Now I've made a mess. Um, I also have several more wools here. All of them are in the lightweight category. Oh. You can give them to the folding queen um, over here. Thank there you. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. she's the folding queen. Oh. I'm not. <laughs> yes. This is a beautiful, lightweight worsted wool that I just got in. It's a beautiful blue. In fact, I had somebody ask me about this just the other day. Uh, we Prior, we had a, a pale blue wool that was more of a grayish blue. This is more of a true blue, but it's not a baby blue. Just so you know, it's not that yeah. baby blue. It's, it's, it's a pretty blue. It's a very pretty blue. Again, this is lightweight. It is a plain is the, weave. Is that the blue or the Saxon green? No, I think this is the blue, isn't it? This is, it's, this I think we're Saxon calling this green. the light Saxon yeah. green. Oh, sorry. It's my mistake. There well, is, it might be light no, Saxon blue. but there's, no, the, because there's the blue. Do you want me to go grab the blue? Because that's lighter than the Saxon green. The blue green. is lighter than. No, no, no. The Saxon green is lighter. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. It's so confusing. I'm going to show you this one. <laughs> Don't mind me. We're real here, right? That's what everybody says. We're real here. We're very real. Um, I love this one. This is a beautiful gold again. I think it was on a gold kick. Yes, yes. This one is really, really nice. It's yeah. got um, it's got gold, but it's also got some green woven into it and some cream. It's very autumnal. Everyone's autumnal? favorite word of the season. Yes. It's really beautiful. Yeah, it's got a it's got a really um, it's almost got a tiny bit of rust in it mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So it's got it's it's like a Glen check. Um, so it's got the little mini check, but then it has a large over check. That's right. the blue. Oh, it is. That's, That's the you know Saxon. What? That's what I'm oh my gosh! You know what? I'm sorry. It's the light. Yeah. Um, I just thought that it was lighter than that. I mean, lighter in weight than this. This is the Saxon, and it is um, very lightweight. It is a little bit, um, it's not sheer, but you can see through it if you put it up to the light. Um, it will drape really well. It has, don't have my glasses on, so I can't see the weave. It's a it looks like a slight twill. Yeah, it's got a twill weave to it. Look, you can see it. Okay, Linda. What? But compare it to this. This, yes. this is that one. That's this the blue. one that's that blue. Mm -hmm. Yes, which is a blue blue, and it. But it's not baby blue. It's just a light blue. It's a mm -hmm. real pretty light blue. And this is just it's a plain. It's kind of like a kind of periwinkle. 
You think it's periwinkle? I think it, it leans a little periwinkle. Okay, whatever you say. Um, we have fights about color. Yes, we, we do, do mm-hmm. have fights about color. Like daily, daily. And I'll be honest with you guys, when for years, the names of fabrics, colors, were based on 18th century. So in the 18th century, they're not going to say denim blue, okay? They're not going to say, what are some of the other ones that would be like totally off the wall that we don't use now? Peach, Fuchsia. right? Fuchsia, yeah. They just didn't use those words. So I base all of my colors on the language of the 18th century. And now I'm realizing that we're getting so many people that time travel that may not be that familiar with the 18th century. And some people want to learn, some people don't, (laughs) that sometimes it's confusing to people. So in advance, I apologize, but I've been doing it for so long, I'm not sure I can change my evil ways. Um, (laughs) It's the truth. But this light blue is really beautiful. It's just a plain weave. It's got a good drape to it. makeup into a lot of different things like somebody was asking about the the trousers this would be kind of light for the trousers i actually i actually like some of our wools that have a little bit more body to them and most of the time traveling like this is great trousers wonderful trousers this is good walking suits this is good suiting period um this would be really good for like a summer stays cover though yes like really nice for that yeah 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 definitely um and that's the other thing people have been asking about wool for stays and pretty much what i try to recommend is just a plain weave you can use a twill weave it's a little bit more fiddly than a plain weave um the casimirs work out really well Mm -hmm. for stays and those have a twill to them so yeah so okay now we've got this Wow. Oh, yes, the cream figure. Yes, this one, I fell in love when I saw this because, again, this one has body to it. Um, you could do, from an 18th century standpoint, you could do, this is uh, style number 6672 because it happens to be on there. Um, this you could do a gown out of, um, but you could also do other time periods. Again, suiting um later period gowns um if you're using it for modern it would make a um i don't know that would you make a blouse out of this a little heavy for a blouse. you think mm-hmm. yeah but um skirts you know it's it's just really cool because it's got this little nubbly effect um the way it's been woven and you just get that gold and that cream and it's a pretty fabric. I like it. And then last but not least, I've got this wonderful time traveling um, check here that's got a, it has a uh, rusty color in it. Um, it's got black. It's got the brownie tones, a um, little bit of gold. Um, again, this is going to be great for time traveling. Uh, you can do, you could do, well, you could actually do Civil War era um, garments from it, um, men's clothing. Um, I don't know that I'd make a lady's gown from it, but then you get later, you can do Edwardian clothing from it um, and then take it all the way up to present day. Another pair, another fabric that's good for our trousers, for the trouser pattern. So... So that, that's really it for, t- well, no, it's not. I need mm-hmm. those. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, this is the yeah. special this, this is it. We wanted to show oh, you some of the things on. that we have online. Connie was asking, what do we mean by time traveling? Oh, uh, okay. This is the term that I've coined because we are known for our research and our concentration in the 18th century with some in the 17th and a little bit into the Regency era. We go up to the Regency era in the 19th century. So that's our capsule. That's where we've always concentrated. That's where I do my textile research. All of it comes from that time era. But as we started to expand and wanting to bring new people in and also having product that we could get that was suitable not necessarily for 18th century 
but suitable for other time periods, we decided to, treat, to create a time traveling aspect to our website. So if you go to this, you're going to see a note that says, this is a time traveling fabric. If you click on it, it's gonna take you to a little note from me that basically says, we do not find this suitable for 18th century application. However, we do feel that it's suitable for this, 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 and this. So it, this, for example, I, when I bought this, cause I usually envision what I think it would be fabulous as, and I immediately saw either a bicycle outfit mm -hmm. or an Edwardian suit out of it, ladies walking suit, or a man's job furs and jacket. And that's, that's, that's what I saw. You might see something else, but that's what I saw when I purchased it. Okay, ready? Ready. Okay. So one of the things that we're known for is doing reproduction work. And we earlier, like two months ago, two and a half months ago, did a survey and put out some uh, images of previous textiles that we have printed, designed and printed based on originals. And you guys chose three textiles and we've had them printed. Two of them are here. <laughs> One of them is floating somewhere. somewhere it's on the ship on a ship mm -hmm. okay. we're not sure but i can show you what we have and some of you may have bought these you know if i've got some of my old customers there hi guys um some of you may have this from from previous times but the first one is a double purple um this is based on a foundling textile it was a um a little girl um, who was left in 1759. The original colorway was red and black. And actually, Christina has the red and black, which is always, I always produce the original colorway first. And I showed that as one of the options, but everybody loved this. But what you see a tremendous amount of, and this is concentrating in the foundlings, is purples, so many purples. They love purple and purple and red combination. Um, so double purple is something that you see in primary sources where they'll say a double blue. It was a double blue sprigged gown. Well, they're talking about a light and a dark blue. And in this case, it's a light and a dark purple. Um, this would do well for 18th century. Um, it will be totally correct. You can really push it up into the Regency period because you do see little sprigs still mm -hmm. happening in the 19th century. Um, so how wide are they, Angela? They are 50 inches wide. They are printed on a really nice cotton and Brooke will attest to it because if you look at the pictures from our workshop that's going online where you see a, a multicolored uh, printed gown, that is one of our reproductions and we print on all the same cotton and she just loved sewing on it it's a real high quality um it worked up really cotton. nicely for my italian gown yeah yeah it did um so you might see some of this floating out there but we have it again so that's the first one uh, it's 50 inches wide it will retail at 18 dollars a yard it'll be going up on tuesday along with some other goodies that we aren't showing you uh, well, you'll have to wait and see. And then we also have, and this is a little boy's gown uh, from 1759 as well. And the original um, was this colorway. So this has actually been, not only has the design been done, but the color's been matched to the original um, and you see a lot of red 
a lot of red, a lot of red black combination. You'll see all of that reflected back in handker my handkerchiefs too, because I'm basing a lot of it on the colors that mm -hmm. if it's not an exact reproduction, it's taken from all the textiles that I've looked at and what I'm finding to be the trends of those textiles in color and design. This is also really similar to a gown, and I can't remember the collection that it's in, but I wanna say it's kind of an Italian gown or it's, it's like a quarterback gown. Mm. And it's a it's got a matching petticoat with a flounce. Mm. Um, I'll see if I can find it yeah, and find we it can share me. the I'm link. Like, but it's a very yeah. similar kind of motif with that red floral with the spotted ground. Because yeah. um, I almost did my Italian gown in this. But actually, the bum bailiff has a print that is almost dead on for the red for that one. and yeah. black. And so that's what I did instead. Yeah. And one of the things that, that um, if you want to know more about our fabrics, when you go online, you're basically getting a little uh, dictionary. So I write all of the um, definitions of our textiles, and some of it's based on what I know from reading, but it's also very much based on what I have physically looked at and analyzed myself. So if you go and read the definitions, it gives you more information about the textiles. It gives you a little mini textile mm -hmm. class. So. Um, okay, so we only have two minutes left before we need to wrap up. So if there are any last questions, you know, now is probably the time. Um, but anything from you ladies? We, we will see you live in the next couple of months. We will see you a couple of times um, because we could only with, 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 oh, oh my God. Poor Christina, oh. all the editing um, with, um, with the workshops. I live workshops. In, in Premiere Pro right now. Yes, she lives in Premiere Pro. Uh, with all the workshop um, business going on, we haven't been able to do a tremendous amount of fil filming. Uh, however, well, I've been we, doing a tremendous amount of filming. Well, no, I mean, we haven't been able to do additional <laughs> because we've been doing a tremendous amount of filming for the workshop. And we did manage to produce two little sew alongs for you, free sew alongs. So um, we've done a lot, but it's just we can't, we won't be able to do canned stuff. Um, over the next couple of months, we'll only have a couple of things that will be canned and the rest will be But hopefully live. you all will be really happy with yeah. what our schedule looks like next year. So. Yeah. yeah, we'll yeah. definitely, we're, we're not going to announce it here because we, we actually want to get that first workshop under our belt and make sure nobody goes, oh my God. <laughs> no. yeah. We'll see yeah. if that happens, yeah. right? Um, oh. But no, it'll be fine. It's going to be good. It's going to be so good. Linda. How many of you are in uh, the first or second session of the gown making workshop? Are any of you here today? Let's yeah. see if anybody oh, responds. Okay. <laughs> I think I know there's a couple at least, but. Mm. Oh. Oh. So there are some. Yeah, there are. There definitely are. Okay. Um, Karen, have... Nami, um, I know, yep, Timesmith. Uh, Emily uh, from Emily's Vintage Visions is in the second oh, session. Oh, right. She did get yeah, in. Yeah. So. Well, that's exciting. Oh, my goodness. There's a lot of you guys. <laughs> oh, Sci-Fi well, Cheer good. Girls in the first session. Tammy's in the first session. Um, oh, that's awesome. exciting, you guys. If we can't be together physically, you know, this is the next best thing. So it really is nice. And so I know we're wrapping up. Remember... Tomorrow is the last day of the best month of the year. Right? <laughs> right, Brittany? Right. right. <laughs> it's just because it's your uh, guys' birthday month. Mm -hmm. And Halloween. And but Halloween. usually like the best weather of the year. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah. Almost anywhere. Yeah, so. exactly. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. The prettiest, the best weather, mm -hmm. all the things. <laughs> so my, the final thing I'm going to say is don't forget to buy an Angela. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Brittany will package so and I will package, an envelope for you. An Angela in, in the little envelope. mini Angela's going, going out. I actually do wish I could shrink myself sometimes, but um, for more reasons than why. Uh, but um, this, you know, even though it's orange and black and white, there are lots of ways you can wear this that's not Halloween. I mean, it's not a pumpkin on it. Just, just Luna, just our sweet little Luna in the center. And lots of dogs and cats. What's not to like? <laughs> anyway, guys, it has been wonderful. 
visiting with you. <laughs> yeah, we got to get Christina around so she'll be able to make us go away. But we were glad to have Brittany here today. We'll see if we can convince her to do more because Christmas, man, we got to have lots of fun. Holiday season's upon us. Is now so. a bad time to say I don't know how to do this? How to turn Just it off. To turn it off. <laughs> so if we disappear, it's because yes. she figured it out. If not, we'll just sit here and look awkward. <laughs> so awkward. That's really nice. I think it's maybe this button, but I'm not sure. We're so going to find out. Goodbye. We're going right, to find we're out. We're going to say goodbye. If we go away, we do. If we don't, you can just laugh at us standing here and waving. Thank you for joining here. us yes. and for commenting. <laughs> yes. Did it work? No, it's like when the news, when the news anchors have their 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 smile on just